everybody. This is James Mark Beverly. This is our presentation on ice climbing anchor strength, an in-depth analysis. This research was done by myself and Dr. Stephen Attaway. We initially published only the white paper, thinking that everybody would read it and the paper would get the information out and be disseminated to all the people that use and practice ice screws and ice anchors, but apparently it hasn't. It's now 2021 and I have uh, quite a few people asking me for more of a presentation style instead of having to read the white paper which is actually pr fairly extensive and I can understand that so here it is. We had a lot of good support from Petzl and Charlet, Black Diamond, the Mountain Rescue Association of the United States, PMI, Gravel North America, Strike Rescue and Rescue Rigger which is now called V-Rigger and is available online for your use if you want to make little vignettes like what we have in this program. Some history dates back into the 16th century when we had some wood blocks and scrimshaws that showed four-point grappettes that were out on the front of the point of people's shoes and boots showing the need to get across glaciers and snowy icy terrain. You see some engravings from Oleus Magnus in 1555 showing what looks to be uh, some nails into the shoes or boots of these workers trying to get around on icy terrain. Oscar Eckenstein back in 1908 developed the first 10-point crampon. He's credited for that. And then of course there's a lot of famous history in attempting to pass the corner I slipped and fell. July 14th of 1865 the famous fall from the Matterhorn a lot of this has to do with footwork and, and foot security. Over the years, crampons have been developed, ice anchors have been developed to try and hold us to the mountain essentially. And ice anchor history was born. During the first ascent of the northwest face of Weisbach Horn in the Eastern Alps in 1924, Willow Welsenbach Fritz Regal first used very first solid ice pitons as protection that it has been documented. In 1960, a Swiss mountain rescue specialist, Eric Fredeli, invented the first ice screw. That's what you see here. Um, and then the Salewa Warthog screw came out in 1969. And then along came Yvonne Chenard. In 1966, he re uh, developed the recurved ice tool. In 72, he released the first tubular ice screw, which changed the way ice climbing is to this very day. Jeff Lowe in 1974 with some very first uh, significant ascents and Jeff was one of my mentors and friends. Learned a lot from him. A lot of people have learned a lot from all of these people. We're all standing on big broad shoulders. Some more broad shoulders that you may not know about. Uh, certainly those of us from the United States but if you dig a little bit deeper and certainly in the Russian side of development we have uh, these two brothers, Vitaly Mikhailovich Balakov and Evgeny Mikhailovich Balakov. Evgeny was a very famous alpinist in his own right. He was actually arrested, being charged as a German spy. There were some executions along with his, his arrest. Vitaly, also very famous in his own right, he was an invention of a threaded ice anchor. Uh, he was also credited, in certainly on the Russian side, of being the inventor of the first CAM. Here's an, uh, one of my old late friends, Tomas Humar, who was on Nanga Parbat and had to be rescued from uh, 20,670 feet. It was the highest rescue in history. The helicopter pilot that went to rescue him basically flew in, could not land, but just gave him a hook and he hooked himself to the helicopter. He was only attached with a single ice screw and the helicopter pilot pulled him from Nanga Parbat's face, pulling the ice screw out of the ice. Had the ice screw held, obviously everybody would have died. Here's where the rescue point was. Um, it's the second red dot there. And you can see that's a pretty significant thing to happen. And so these kind of events really got us thinking about, well, how, how good and how strong are ice anchors, ice screws? Here's some pictures from that 
dramatic rescue. Here's some other maybe dramatic pictures. There's some photos of some of the mountain rescue folks out in New Hampshire that practice regularly with ice screws, and ice anchors. Mountain guides in the lower left practice crevasse rescue. There's also just regular old ice climbers like the middle right, that's me climbing up the talisman out of Uray. So there's all kinds of applications for ice screws. One thing that you don't see here is lake rescue. You can definitely use an ice screw or an ice anchor to pull somebody out of fractured ice on lake ice. So ice anchor types, uh, there's been, the poundins are been replaced over the years. Uh, they were difficult to take out. If someone could put them in fairly easily, but uh, taking them out was just a nightmare. So you wound up seeing a lot of these at the base of ice climbs because they just simply been abandoned. Then came the, the ice bollard. That was also something that had been around for a long period of time, but these were somewhat more suspicious and people had calved off the top of these and fallen to their death. Uh, and so ice bollards are a skill, a tr you know, something that you need to acquire as part of your trade before you trust your life to it. And then there's the screw in ice anchors. And there's been another evolution of ice anchor uh, or ice screws since we've done this research. They're a little bit wider, they're made out of uh, aluminum, they're not as strong, but they are for you know, light and fast applications. We want to look at reboard ice screws, so somebody put a screw in, took it out and left, and somebody else came along and saw this hole and then just put in another screw. We'll show a demonstration of that in a minute. There's also ice, what they call ice hooks or specters from Black Diamond, Cassin, the various different companies makes and models but really we've shown these in our last research that they're really not good for anything but aid placement on ice if that were indeed needed be just better as a as a like a piton style and in, in rock this makes rock and ice type of placement and then we get to the threaded anchors and so the threaded anchors came along with the abolikov testing of ice screws the uiaa the union international association to alpinism the safety commission has developed uh, testing of the strength of the actual ice screw itself, not of the ice screw in the medium that it's placed in. In this case, we use something called Waitong, which is an artificial glacier ice replica, so to speak. Uh, and then they test the strength of these applications, as you see here. You can also download the UIA ice screw testing data sheet from the UIA website. We looked at strength of ice anchors most used. These were our methods. We recorded air temperature, ice temperature. We used uh, thermometers to do that, wet and dry bulbs. We looked at depth and angle measurement. And we also looked at fracture characteristics. And we did that on lake ice. And you can see here we are out at Echo Lake. We did some testing, some limited testing in Uray, Colorado. This is our pull tester pull, pulling on some man-made ice. And then we also did drop testing in the lower right corner as well. <laughs> All right, go. All right, man. So we're out here at Echo Lake in Colorado, and uh, we're just pull testing reboard ice screws. So we've got pretty good ice out here. It's a homogeneous control across the lake, and the temperature's around 27 degrees Fahrenheit, so around minus 2 degrees Celsius air temperature. This ice is pretty good, pretty solid. Kind of gooey about uh, what you'd see in late spring ice conditions. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take our ice screw, we're gonna put it in at about a positive 20 degrees. So this would be our direction of force. We put it in at about a positive 20 degrees here. Okay, so say for instance, somebody came along and put in an ice screw such as this on an ice climb, drilled it in, clipped it, never fell on it, but then took the uh, second, came along and pulled it out. So you can see that's a pretty good core there, all right? And something that's very common for ice climbers to do, okay, pretty good core. For ice climbers to do is come along and they find that hole, they'll see it, and they'll just take another screw. Generally they'll have, 
different size screws, but worst case scenario is if they've only got a small screw left, and then we'll put it in the ice, okay, we'll clip it, and pretend like it was our own ice screw hole. So really what we want to do is, is find out how good are these rebored ice screw holes. And uh, on the other end of this, so we've got a chain anchor, okay, and we measure this. Sorry, we measure this in our ice screw hole um, with a goniometer, so I can lay this on horizontal and flat, and line this up with that axis. And I'm looking at around. This is about a 16 degree angle, so falling in between a 10 and 20 degree angle, like what we did our drop test on previously. So um, we record all this stuff in our book, and uh, here's how we're going to pull on this chain comes down. We've got a load cell. The load cell is connected to a to our uh, display over here. And then what we have is uh, our hydraulic ram, and the ram's connected to our power supply back over off the lathe. All right, so let's go ahead and crank this thing up. We'll pull it out real quick. See what we got. I'm going to go ahead and reset this to zero, zero out, peak scale, and we are pulling. So we've got three, three ice anchors and down, down at the uh, other end of this ice screw. This is number 12 sample. So this is a good demonstration of uh, how we do a reboard ice screw. We're going to put it in about a 14, 15 degree angle positive from horizontal. And we're selecting some very good ice. It's a nice good core. You can see the core of ice coming out of the middle of the tube. And this is a longer threaded uh, screw initially. And then we'll just grab a, a shorter screw so we're not actually over driving the threads that were placed initially by the longer screw and creating a essentially a a, a freshly screwed in ice screw but th in this case we'll just put a stubby in and the stubby goes in super easy and this is a very popular thing for ice climbers to do is just use a hole that they already see and uh, just go ahead and put an ice screw in so it doesn't take much effort you just put it in and We'll clip it off there, clip our load cell, which is on the, in the blue. And then up above us is the test mass. And obviously this is going to be a factor two fall here. You can see the load line, we've got a backup line.
And then we do the countdown. Three, two, one, and we let her go. A little bit of a pause here to just identify the backup line, the load cell, test mass, and you can see that the eye screw is blown out, so we can record that. We've got some good clean data there, and this was uh, our reboard screw, drop screw test from Uray. The average there is about 10.5 kilonewtons. Typically, we always used, I'd always used, uh, what's called an Abolikov. That's a straight horizontal 60-60-60 triangle. And that's what you're looking at down here on the lower right. One day, I had done a climb called Gravity's Rainbow. I came down, and I had happened to see Vince Anderson in Uray. And uh, we started ch chatting. He said, hey, what are you doing? I was like, oh, yeah, I just got off of Gravity's. And we did some other climbs that day. And he's like, yeah, it was really in weird condition, huh? And, I was like, yeah, and I said, you know what was really funny is I saw um, a couple of threaded ice anchors and they were vertically placed. And he said, yeah, I did that because it was just, there really wasn't good ice there. And I started thinking about it and I wondered if it was as good as a, as a horizontal ice anchor or if it was worse and I just don't know. I said, well, you know, Vince, that's a really interesting question and uh, that's something maybe I can answer. So we looked at it is a topic of research. So here you go. We looked at putting them in at uh, 20 degrees, a plus 20 degree angle, basically playing with the amount of volume inside of the threaded anchor. And then these are vertical threaded anchors. So this one's at basically straight in 90 degree to the ice and then a 60 degree up. This one's a 60 and a 60. And so we looked at several different configurations. And here's a graph that shows a scatter plot of all the different kinds of threaded eye sinkers that we had. So I'll just run through it a little bit. Um, we had failure loads on the left, that's our kilonewtons, and the depth on the x-axis. We looked at horizontal, straight, like a typical, traditional Abolikov threaded eye sinker with 7 millimeter purlon. And we pulled it to failure, and all of these, in fact, were, were pulled to failure. So red line test is what we call that. If you look at the vertical placement, so instead of a horizontal, we went to a vertical placement of seven millimeter cordelette. You can see we've also got pretty good scatter in here as well, but no low numbers. All of these were very high in comparison. So these, I think, these lower numbers kind of skewed out um, the horizontal. As far as a one half method where we went 90 and then 60 degrees, so you can see we didn't trap as much ice as if we would have just gone 60, 60, 60. So we used a 7 millimeter purlon cordelette, and here's the scatter for those. Much weaker than what you saw for the others up above. This is all 7 millimeter. Then we wanted to jump and change into 1 inch tubular webbing and see how that would perform. And indeed, it performed much better. So we looked at the vertical placement with 1 inch tubular webbing and we we're getting up around 16 kilonewtons and you can see the scatter there is quite nice. Horizontal with a regular horizontal um, threaded anchor with one inch tubular webbing also in quite nice but a couple of readings that were a little bit lower. Um, when we look at horizontal with 9 16 inch and 24 inch Dyneema we got a little bit more scatter in there and when we look at waterfall ice with horizontal seven millimeter, so this was all lake ice, and then we get to waterfall ice with seven millimeter uh, with a horizontal placement. So if we compared the waterfall ice with seven millimeter purlon and horizontal with lake ice seven millimeter purlon, you can see we're getting a pretty decent agreement overall. And we'll show you the numbers here. So if we looked at Abolikovs in horizontal, traditional V-thread mode, these are all red line tests again. So these aren't just like we pulled on it to that force. We actually broke these and, and pulled them out of the ice. Then compared those to vertical A-thread, you can see there's, there's a nice bell curve for both of these. But what you also see is that the A-thread tends to be stronger than in the horizontal placement. 
So what Vince was talking about actually was true. So here's the data for horizontal B threads and A threads respectively. If you just looked at the mean number and just said on average, what does it look like? And then this is all obviously not a high number of tests, but it's, it's a, a significant number of tests. The mean for the horizontal B threads is 11.3, whereas the A threads 14.4. Not a trivial difference. That's a significant difference. So when we're looking at a three kilonewton difference, that's that's a a margin of safety beyond anything that I've seen so far. The standard deviation is really not that much. So even if you look at the highest number for V threads, it's just barely getting to the mean average for an A thread. And when I say A thread, I named it A thread instead of a V thread, obviously because I was talking to Vince Anderson, so we call it an A thread. If you look at differing orientations of Abolikov anchors, here's another scatter plot. Um, it just shows the failure load on the left and the overall area. So the total area that we had encompassed by the actual thread itself, then you can see that the more area that is engulfed by the A or V thread, the stronger it's going to be. Reboard ice screws and threaded anchors by comparison. So if we looked at drop tests for our reboard ice screws and we looked at the strength of them, or all of our ice screws in general, we can look at drop tests and slow pull tests you can see there's a nice bell curve. There's also very good agreement, not just for reboard screws, but individually just ran single place screws without being reboard. And you compare that to our 2005 data, there's also very good agreement there. If you look at a Bolikov and horizontal up in the Anderson vertical thread, you can see there's a nice bell curve. That's the darker number. That's the darker bar for the Anderson thread, and that's the green bar for the horizontal abolikov. You don't see any of those Anderson threads failing less than 12 kilonewtons. If we look at uh, threaded anchors versus our reboard or regular ice screw anchors, you can see here that the horizontal V-thread anchors, all, all of these again have a, a decent bell curve showing normal distribution curves. Um, if we looked at the horizontal V threads compared to a vertical A thread, again, um, stronger with the A thread than the V thread. If you look at stubbies, the very short uh, ice screws, like nine to 13 centimeters long versus long screws, the long screws are gonna be stronger than the stubbies. But here's an interesting thing too, is that the long reboard ice screws were actually stronger than any of the uh, threaded anchors, whether they were horizontal or vertical in orientation. And that's just the data that we got from all of our tests. Confused about what to do? Well, here's a, a good test for you. So maybe it's quiz time. So go ahead and hit pause right here and go ahead and answer these questions if you can. And name at least three major problems with this situation in regards to anchor strength. What's worse, a fault factor two or a UIAA drop, or maybe one and the same? Name at least three major problems with this situation in regards to ISA anchor strength. So I can tell you a few right here. Um, first of all, they're just on a single anchor point. Next, the this guy is only tied, he's tied into the anchor point that the leader is climbing on. And that's actually not a good idea because if he takes this big fall and in this configuration, he's gonna put a big amount of force on that one single anchor. Other things that could be problematic here, instead of clipping the anchor, if you're on a multi-pitch climb, instead of clipping the anchor here, as you leave the anchor, it's probably best to either take that factor to fall which is what you saw in our previous research because the impact forces are in fact lower on the anchor itself. It's always best to put your own high screw in that does not include the anchor and it should be at least 
15 to 30 centimeters away from the main anchor. So those are some things to think about. We'll go through some of our conclusions here, and then I'll show you some examples. So reboard screws are, are too weak to withhold a UIAA drop test fall factor all of the time. They do work some of the time. Um, they, they were indeed stronger than expected, and they were comparatively close to an ice screw placed in virgin ice. Good ice. Reboard ice screws are pretty much nearly as strong as freshly drilled holes. So it was nice and refreshing to know that. Um, that was something that was a question that we wanted to answer. And now that I've actually spoken with uh, Black Diamond since we did this research and since the new ice screws have come out, which are a little bit wider in diameter, Things are definitely different at play out there. Can you rebore the new ice screws? And uh, we haven't done that test yet. Can you overbore the old ice screw holes with the new ice screws? Absolutely. I think there's uh, you probably don't even need to do any testing with that. I think that you know that's pretty much just drilling your own new hole. It's likely that, that any refreezing process that decreases the diameter of the hole over time is actually a benefit for a reboard screw. It's also beneficial if you have refreezing of an old hole and then you go to rebore that old hole. So it behaves as if it were just a new hole, but it really doesn't matter. So as far as the overall strength is concerned. A reboard ice screw left in overnight in frozen temperatures will likely freeze very very solid and quite nicely and probably be stronger than you expected and also be stronger than if you just freshly put an ice screw in. Even if you were suspending an 80 kilogram mass from it the entire time. We never saw any melt out and even if it's placed at a positive angle. The greater the area of an Abolikov or an Anderson anchor has, the more likely it is to be a stronger anchor. So say the longest screw for the belay to make an Abolikov using a 60 by 60 by 60 or an Anderson, even better yet, for 60 by 60 by 60. And that's the best guide line for uh, angle drilling. So in our research, we accepted that a single eye screw, even a short reed board screw, um, it's generally about the same in strength as a horizontal Abolikov anchor. The longer the ice screw is, the stronger the anchor will be, regardless of whether it's a freshly pl placed screw or a reboard screw. We can see now that there's no significant difference when comparing the three manufacturers that we tested. In this case, it was uh, Petzl, Black Diamond, and Gravel. When placed into an old hole of the same or different manufacturer. So that's nice to know. Reverse threads, meaning how the threads are placed on the actual ice screw itself. You'll, if you look at it, the bevel is, can be reversed or one way or another. The reverse threads did not appear to make any difference in any regard. The optimum angle placement is greater than 8 degrees and less than 16 from our regression analysis, and 14 seems to be the, more of the magic number. The vertical Abolikov or the Anderson thread is superior to the traditional horizontal or other configurations we tested. So we called it an A thread since uh, I had that discussion with Vince Anderson and he, and that was what inspired me to do the investigation into other configurations. For drop test data on waterfall ice, we were weaker than slow pull test data on lake ice, but just by a, a, a little margin. Uh, rescue anchors for slow pulls will likely act as strong placements than when climbers fall onto ice screws. Also say never use a single anchor, even if you're repelling. Um, an A-thread, V-thread, or ice screw is the only anchor because higher forces are expected as seen with uh, multi-pitch climbing. You realize there's lots that you can take away from this research. There's certainly a lot that you can implement into the practice of ice climbing and rescue work. We hope this information has been helpful and stay safe out there.